Good morning and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel from Monday the 25th of October. Time is flying by, isn't it? Halloween will be upon us in no time. Have you got your costume ready? Better question, do you have your treats ready for the kids when they come to the door? They've had a tough couple of years. We need to give them lots of good treats. Last week I did a lot of talking about church and, you know, should we go to church and do we go to church or don't we go to church and all those things. Today and probably tomorrow I'd like to talk about <laughs> what is church this day these days. It seems to me that in some ways church has become the the new are, the, the arena has become the new church, the rink where people go and hang out and talk to each other and communicate and uh, you know people bemoan the fact that years ago and it's been so long ago that we probably shouldn't be mo- bemoaning it anymore. Um but when when hockey for whatever reason they determined that hockey should be allowed to be played on Sunday mornings. I remember being a teenager, probably grade 12 or 13, 18, 19 years old. My dad coached hockey. And quite often, his 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 practice times were at 6 in the morning over an Ar- Argyle Arena in London, Ontario. You could not get much further away from our house if you tried. Like, we were one corner and Argyle was completely diagonal across the city and it took a while to get there so I and I was a big hockey fan and I loved watching the kids and I was involved and um, didn't get involved in in London um, with the way I did in Niagara Falls but I would still like to go out and watch so I would get up with that at five in the morning and go out to go to the game or go out to the rink and watch the kids watch the kids sometimes I'd go with one of the moms for a coffee run to Tim Hortons and we bring back tons of tons of coffees and everybody would sort of wake up while we were there. And then we would go, most of us, with the kids, with the, the hockey players who weren't too much younger than me, four or five years, about yeah, they are about peewee or, yes, about five years younger than me. We would go to a little restaurant just in a plaza around the store, around the corner from the school, for the, from the school and the, uh, the rink. And they had a $1.99 breakfast. You could get... Um, Bacon or a- bacon and eggs and hash browns and toast and coffee all for a dollar ninety nine if you got there before you know eight thirty or whatever time it was, and it was a great morning. We had lots of conversation. Parents checked in with each other. You know if something happened in the schools or something was upsetting or somebody was sick, the community was there. They supported one another. We did things together. We we did fundraisers. We went on tournaments. Everybody looked out for everybody else's kids. We had a strong community. We even had a community of people who would come and say, you know what, this is what's going on, could you please pray? One of the kids um, had previ- in previous years had cancer. And so when tests were coming up or something like that, uh, his mom would come to the, Mary would come to the group and say, you know, this is what's happening. For those of you who pray, can you, can you pray for my son? Because his, his annual tests are coming. We're hoping he's still in remission, things like that. It really was a community of, of very faithful people gathered around a common cause who who shared, came from all different parts of the community to share in a very specific kind of community. Sounds an awful lot like church community, doesn't it? The difference was that we weren't gathered around the table. We weren't gathered around the body and blood of Christ celebrating Jesus, praying to God. Although for some of the hockey games, the Lord's name was used and a lot of praying happened especially when kids got got hurt or things like that as they were into the checking era. It seems like we really do look around and see that our, our churches have been, the populations of our churches have really been hurt or, you know, you, some would even say decimated by things like Sunday morning hockey practices or sa- soccer practice or football or skating or, you know, name your sport, name your activity. Sunday has become just another part of the schedule for people who don't have scheduling available during the daytime, Monday through Friday. And, you know, the, 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 the community arenas are needed and they're available on Sunday mornings. We have moved into a, a place in our society where our focus is different. I don't remember these times. I think we were still living in them when I was a child, but I wasn't paying attention. But there are times in the church when we look back and know that that Sunday morning was everyone went to a church. Some communities, there would be one church, there would be usually a Roman Catholic church, and then another Protestant church or two, depending on the size of the community. 
and then some outlying smaller churches in the in the more rural areas where people of a different different bent would go in some places that the main church might be the main protestant church might be the united church having been presbyterian or methodist and coming together to become the united church maybe the anglican church was the big church in town that everybody went to or maybe the lutheran depending on culture you know if it was a very german background then probably the, the lutheran church in canada at least would be the main church everyone went to and then there'd be other the smaller churches where you know pockets of people would go but church I'm, I'm not suggesting i don't think that necessarily that that church was the main thing you did on a sunday morning simply because everybody was so be faithful in believing in jesus christ that people went to church simply because they felt called by God to go. The church was a central place where people gathered that they knew, that they would see at work and around town and that they would have drinks with or they would golf with or they would play baseball with or people that they would, you know, help out when it came to a barn raising or something. People that they were consider their community. In some ways, really their family, their extended family where everyone was aunt or uncle to someone else and you couldn't get away with anything if you're a kid because somebody would be watching and would let your parents know. The church was that place where people gathered on Sunday mornings and in some cases it really was a place where you know if you didn't show up what was going on. Your you know business connections were made and Everybody knew who was the, you know, that, that Mr. Mr. Baker who owned the bake shop would be there and you would only go to his bake shop to buy food because he was one of your church companions. Or Mr. Smith owned, you know, Smith's um, Value Mart or a grocery store and you would only go there. You wouldn't go to someone else's because Mr. Smith and his family were part of your con congregation. I don't I don't believe necessarily that in in the great old old days of the church when we had three and four hundred kids in Sunday school in a city parish or we had 40 or 50 in a Sunday school and we were worshiping three times a day and walking uphill both ways to church in the six feet of snow and all those old stories. I don't believe really that the, the heart of it was a deep, deep desire to learn about Jesus. I think really what we were looking for was a deep desire to have community. Those people that you could that you would watch out for and they would watch out for you. Those people that were that were really were family when you were so far away, especially if it when we were people who had sorry about that, dude just moved the table. When people would move away, whether it was emigrating, coming to Canada from someplace else, or moving from where they grew up for a job opportunity or something. Those towns and cities became places where maybe our our traditional family members, moms and dads and brothers and sisters weren't here, so we developed those relationships with those people with whom we worked and we, we worshipped. And yes, God was certainly a big part of it, but I don't believe that Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit were you know, if you'd asked any of those people on an exit poll from church on any Sunday, were you here, pre pre you know, predominantly to learn about Jesus Christ and to pray and to grow your faith? I imagine that many people would say, well, of course, yes, that's why I'm here. But if you dug deeper, you'd find out it was really a lot about coffee hour and checking in with one another and, and just feeling com comfortable and companionship because that's what we do when we gather as a family, which is what church is. So now I'm wondering... Have our arenas, have our rinks become our new churches, those places where we gather to to catch up, to, to chit chat, to like those Sunday mornings when I had when we went to Argyle Arena and then went out for lunch together as a team. Have we have we gotten to a place where our new center of activity, our center of community, is no longer the church but is someplace else? And if that's the case, is that a bad thing? We're still gathering. We're still, hopefully, people coming together in a central place, just a different place. I think where we might have find that this is not such a good thing is when it's only a certain group of people who are able to do that because hockey isn't everybody's thing. But we might find that if the rink has become the new church, then maybe the football field or the yoga place downtown or the, you know, um, Jack's place or the hotel in 
in Edgerton, those places where people get together, maybe those are the new centralized churches. And maybe we need to think about that as a church and discover what can we do about that? Should we do something about that? Or should we be encouraging that as well as doing something else? So I think tomorrow I'll talk about that doing something else. Have a good day. God bless you. And wherever you gather with community, may it play, be a place where you definitely do feel God's presence, whether it's at church or someplace else. And if you don't feel God's presence, then probably no one else gather there does, and you can bring God to their presence. So you be the presence of God in that place. Bring your faithful part and share it with the people there gently. Because wherever we gather as Christians, whether we intend to or not, we bring Christ with us. So take God, take Christ, take the Holy Spirit with you to your gathering space. And I will see you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel. God bless you.